Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It seems as um, all of Diddy's associates are forced to endorse Kamala Harris. I don't know if they think they will be pardoned uh, by uh, Kamala, if Kamala is going to push their little secrets under the rug. I don't know, but it seems strange. So check this out. So Elon Musk criticized Jennifer Lopez for speaking out against Donald Trump while remaining silent about her ex-boyfriend Diddy over the years. So in a conversation on Joe Rogan's podcast, Elon Musk questioned Jennifer Lopez's credibility saying J-Lo was his ex-girlfriend and now she's warning people about Trump. How many people did she warn about Diddy? Maybe we should not trust her. Then Joe Rogan added to the critique, noting it's interesting that so many of Diddy's close associates who frequented his gatherings are now vocal supporters of Kamala Harris. Then Elon Musk further asserted that people in the music entertainment industry had to know that Diddy was abusing kids and still fed him kids. Like, where is the accountability? They had to know. Jennifer Lopez and Diddy dated from 1999 to 2001 while he was still with Kim Porter and Jennifer Lopez was married to Ohani Noha when Jennifer Lopez started cheating on Ohani with Diddy while working on her first album. You guys, check out the clip. It's just amazing how many people in the Diddy party list that are supporting Kamala. Too. Yeah, seriously, it's like, like insane. publicly, openly, like yeah. all in. Yes, it's, it's like J Lo, like was was like his ex girlfriend, <laughs> and, and it's like now, now deciding she's like warning people against Trump. I'm Isn't like, well, wait a second. So how many people did she warn against Diddy? Right. Oh, zero. Okay. <laughs> Right. Well, uh, maybe we shouldn't trust her opinion. Did you see the Babylon Bee's <laughs> take on it? Did you see the Babylon Bee? Babylon Bee's awesome, but put a, oh my god, they're so on fire because the left can't say anything. Well, the the, the, the onion has been crippled. The, well, the pro the problem is that like the, the find that uh, that post. The, the woke ideology makes like humor illegal. Yes. So when when like there's so many no like no humor no fly zones. Right. You, you can you can't make fun of anything. Yeah. Um, uh, the Babylon Bee had a thing about Kamala Harris. Diddy's <laughs> yeah, ex-girlfriend urges exactly. Americans to trust her judgment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By the way, you get to see how bad an I actress mean, like, she is, too. Yeah, that but, but speech I mean, like, was terrible. Like, like if she's going to be warning people, why does she want, never warn anyone about Diddy? Exactly. Yeah. It, the whole thing is so strange to watch play out. And now are monumental. And you guys have made this place a city where dreams come true, where people from all walks of life have planted a flag in hopes of creating a better future for themselves and their families. And you are the ones who are going to send the message that Nevada is Harris country. Her opponent, on the other hand, doesn't see it that way. He has consistently worked to divide us. At Madison Square Garden, he reminded us who he really is and how he really feels. It wasn't just Puerto Ricans that were offended that day, okay? It was every Latino in this country. It was humanity and anyone of decent character. I promised myself I wouldn't get emotional, but you know what? You know what? We should be emotional. We should be upset. We should be scared and outraged. We should. Our pain matters. We matter. You matter. Your voice and your vote matters. I am an American woman. I am the daughter of Guadalupe Rodriguez and David Lopez, a proud daughter and son of Puerto Rico. I am Puerto Rican, soy Boricua Carajo, and yes, I was born here, and we are Americans. I am a mother. I am a mother. 
mother. I am a sister. I am an actor and an entertainer, and I like Hollywood endings. I like when the good guy, or in this case, the good girl wins. And with an understanding of our past and a faith in our future, I will be casting my ballot for Kamala Harris for President of the United States proudly. You can't even spell American without Rican. <laughs> this is our country, too. And we, we must exercise our right to vote on November 5th. So, despite the lawsuits, all the lawsuits and indictment, Jennifer has not publicly commented on the allegations against Diddy. Recently, she was asked about it, but she ignored the question and walked away like a coward. She was, in, she was signing autographs, and someone in the crowd asked her about Diddy, and then she stopped and ran like a true coward. So yeah, we don't care what Jennifer Lopez have to say about anything, especially about politics. We don't trust her. We don't trust any of them. You know, and then they're coming out left and right. Did you see her speech? Oh, my gosh. It was, like, it was bad. She kept reading the teleprompter. Her eyes kept shifting. Her eyes were just shifting. She did a bad job reading that teleprompter. I mean, she's been in the industry for years, so she's used to reading teleprompters. But I don't know what happened at the Kamala Harris rally because she did terrible. She, like, her eyes just, like... She could not get any words out without looking at the teleprompter. And they're all like that. All of them were like that. Beyonce, oh my gosh, did you see that one? She went up there for three minutes. She said, I'm not here as a celebrity. What? I didn't know you could take the title on and off. Can you remove the celebrity title whenever you feel like it? How are you not there as a celebrity? You are a celebrity. You can, I mean... <laughs> and then she said, I'm not here as a politician. Uh, duh, you're not a politician, so you can't be there as a politician because you're not one. So her speech was so stupid. It was so stupid. And then you could tell she forced herself to be hype because you know how she sounds. She sounds very, you know, but this time she was trying to, like, like seem hype, and she doesn't have that kind of hype kind of, you know, thing. Uh, personality but yeah but she was just like trying to like it was just cringe it was cringe and so she could have saved that that was a waste of three minutes talking about she's not here as a celebrity <laughs> what what so you can take it off on and off whenever you feel like it talking about she's not here as a politician duh you're not a politician so what <laughs> You guys, it was so cringe. And, oh my gosh, Cardi B. I really was trying to avoid <laughs> talking about Cardi B's speech. But, oh my gosh, that was the worst. So her teleprompter broke, okay? She stood there at the podium for a full minute. Okay, she kept saying, one second, guys. One second. And then, <laughs> and then she was calling for her assistant. Uh, Precious, I guess that's her name, Precious. <laughs> and then she was trying to fill in, you know, saying little things to give Precious time to bring her cell phone to her. It was so bad. And then she claimed she wrote it. We know she did not write it. She only, all she did was, they, write, they wrote her the speech, but all she did was add little, you know, her personality in it. That she was a little things, you know, we know how she is little ghetto stuff, so she'll add little stuff in there to make it her own, but she did not write that speech. I mean, the girl was reading from a teleprompter, okay? I mean, on the phone, I'm sorry, because the teleprompter broke, so she was reading the speech on her cell phone. That was a mess. Oh, my gosh. These, <laughs> and then she claimed she was not going to endorse anyone. She criticized Biden, right? Remember when they... When they had her come out and um, endorse Biden when Biden was going against Trump, right? And then, oh my goodness, she, it was bad, 
right? And then recently, she was saying how the economy is bad, everything is expensive, even for her as a rich person, right? Eggs are bad, uh, eggs are so high. She was saying all these things about, you know, what was going on with the economy. And then, of course, her being a little puppet, because she's a puppet, they all are. And yeah, next thing you know, Cardi B is looking foolish on that stage at the rally for Kamala Harris. It's crazy. I don't even know if I want to play her speech. <laughs> it was bad. You know what? You guys need to see this. So um, I'm going to end this video, but I'm going to play this clip for you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Peace. I'm nervous. I'm excited. What's up, y'all? One second, guys. One second. Okay. So I don't take lightly the call. Sorry, guys, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, guys. I've been waiting for this moment this whole life, my whole life. I need patience over here. Patience, where are you, girl? I need patience over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How you guys doing tonight? How you guys doing tonight? Are we ready to make history? Are we ready to make history? Are we ready to change these four years? No. Are we ready to change the next eight years? Because we're going to make sure we have Kamala Harris in office for eight years. Thank you. All right. Vice President Kamala Harris, thank you for having me. I do not take lightly the call to show up, the call to speak up, the call to deliver a message that's been on my heart for a hot minute now. Now, I took my time writing this speech, so I'm gonna make sure I deliver it right. Because I got something I've been wanting to say for a long time. I've been saying it on Twitter, on my Instagram, and I'm ready to tell it to you now. Y'all yeah. ready to listen? Yeah. All right, now. All right. Just like Kamala Harris, I too have been the underdog. I've been underestimated. My success belittled and discredited. Let me tell you something. Let me tell y'all something. Women have to work 10 times harder perform 10 times better, and still people question us how we got to the top. They be like, how she got there? Hold on, let me get, let me, let me warm up. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I can't stand a bully. But just like Kamala, I always stand up to one. All the time, I'm ready for them. Yeah. And I'm gonna be real with y'all. I wasn't gonna vote this year. I wasn't. But Kamala Harris joining the race, she changed my mind completely. I did not have faith on any candidates until she joined the race and said the things that I wanted to hear, that I want to see next in this country, all right? I believe in every word that comes out of her mouth. She's passionate, she's compassionate, she shows empathy, and most of all, she is not delusional. Yeah. Yeah. Kamala recognized that this country is at risk.
that the economy needs to get stronger, that the cost of food and the cost of living is too high. Damn, it's even high for me. I believe her when she says, under her, buying eggs and milk won't break the bank. Because she's going to pass a ban on price gouging on groceries. And she told me that in my face. So she better not lie to me in my face. Yeah. I believe her when she says she will make housing more affordable by providing Americans with $25,000 in down payment assistance. Yeah, yeah, hold on, I got more. Yeah, yeah, she's promising a lot. And I believe her when she says she will provide a tax cut to 100 million middle class Americans. That's a lot of Americans. And that includes $6,000 for parents in the first year of child's life. Y'all remember when they used to do that? Y'all remember when this country used to do that? Yeah. And speaking of health care, let's talk about it. Let's talk about health care. Did you hear what Donnie Trump said the other day? Y'all heard what he said? All right, I'm going to tell you right now. Let me, get, let me drink my water. Yeah, stay hydrated. He said he's going to protect women whether they like it or not. He said he's going to protect women whether they like it or not. I'm repeating it. Donnie Dunk, please. Protection for women, especially if we're talking about maternal and mental health care, is in telling them what to do with their bodies. It's supporting them and giving them the care they need for what they choose to do with their bodies. I don't play that. People like Donald Trump don't believe women deserve rights. And when those rights are taken away, they are nowhere to be found. When a mother's going through postpartum, he's not there to hold her hand. When a child is in foster care or in a shelter because their mother is not mentally stable or financially stable to take care of them, they're not there. The people outside planning, yeah, yeah, they're not there. They're all gone. Those people outside Planned Parenthood, screaming at women's faces, they don't be there when women go through stuff. They don't. And everything is possible. Shout out to the single moms out there, but it's hard. <clears throat> Trump says he's going to protect women whether they like it or not. Well, if his, def if his definition of protection is not the freedom of choice, if his definition of protection is making sure our daughters have fewer rights than our mothers, then I don't want it! I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. We all knew Trump was a hustler, but hustling women, out of, and I'm a hustler too, yeah. But hustling women out of their rights to their body is nasty work. Hustling Americans out of their hard earned money by selling Trump watches, Trump sneakers and Trump Bibles. By the way, the watches is $100,000. Yeah, yeah. Made in China, another country he discredited, is nasty too. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you, wait, is Milwaukee in the building? Is Wisconsin in the building? Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Do we really trust this man with our economy? A man who cares only about making himself rich and cutting taxes for his billionaire friends. I don't even get a tax cut. <laughs> Today is your wallet. Tomorrow, he'll be conning you out of your health care rights. And that's a fact. I want you to hear that again. Today, he's hustling you with the, oh, buy my sneakers. Tomorrow is going to be your health care rights. He's going to take it away from you. He's going to snatch it. 
Donald Trump talks about how he has a concept of a plan, but America, the only concept of a plan he has is a plan to hustle you. Yeah. Because we know what he's really setting, setting us for. He's selling more than watches and sneakers. He's selling us bigotry, misogyny, division, chaos, and confusion. He wants us to hate each other. And it's going to cost you your money, equal opportunity, affordable health care, and any rights you thought you had for your body. He's going to take it from you. Listen to me. He's going to take it. Thank you, I love you too. I'm not giving Donald Trump a second chance. No, no. I'm not taking any chances with my future and I damn sure and taking no chances with the future of my children. All three of them. All three of them. I'm not giving him the chance. You're not giving him the chance. Yeah. I'm with Kamala. In America, I believe in you to turn out on Tuesday. Turn out and turn up on Tuesday. Turn the page and let's win this thing.